Just yesterday, a case was filed in New Orleans um, to establish uh, the legitimacy um, of same-sex marriage in Louisiana. Is it too much for us to think about the implications of loving with respect to the case in Kentucky, which was it the day before yesterday or the day before that, in which a judge declared that the right of persons of the same sex to marry was, and he cited Loving for this, that this right was a fundamental right, this right to marry, and that the state did not have a proper interest in intruding upon that right. Um, I do not mean to predict the way the United States Supreme Court will resolve these issues, for surely these issues will go to the court. I do mean to say that the issues raised in loving go well beyond race. They go well beyond the maintenance of segregation in a time of the past in which white domination was the rule of the American South. Words have significance equal protection of the laws. This is a phrase with significance. And I suspect that very shortly we will see how loving is applied in an entirely different context. Fashion meeting Oh Lord I memory They linger still In that little Is comic leasing legal now, or is it just changed form? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody would refer to it as comic leasing anymore. Um, <laughs> now what you have are private prisons that uh, use labor uh, in the in the uh, in the service of both state organizations and uh, private corporations. The regulation around the work that prisoners do and uh, the conditions under which they do it have changed dramatically. That being said, the reason certain uh, uh, interests push uh, private prisons and things like that, I don't think are terribly dissimilar from what I've read about convict lease. Uh, but there are political issues there <laughs> that, that are very complex, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care to simplify. You know every, every Sunday morning, Since I'm actually writing a history right now of white trash, and I'm talking about class, uh, we pretend like we're a class in society and we're not. And I think about the homeless, um, the way we kind of ignore that and think that, that doesn't matter. And as we know, homelessness crosses <coughs> across all barriers. Um, but I think, I think it is important to realize that the you know, slavery is an institution 
Um, and how, why it was so ingrained. I mean, that's the other thing I disagree with. The documentary said that there was a moment where in the South they thought slavery was going to end after the American Revolution. That's not true at all. There were some laws passed <coughs> in Virginia uh, where they allowed slave owners to emancipate their slaves, but there was no really widespread support for ending slavery. It's true, and the reason that Cotton revived slavery because slavery begins to move west, and that's what's also really important. It moves into Mississippi territory, Alabama, uh, there's slavery in Texas, uh, and in a sense, that's what contributes to the revival of slavery uh, in the South. But there really was no moment <laughs> you know, where it was going to be ended. And even in the northern states, the, the irony of that is that even though they passed laws, that ended slavery, some of the laws they passed still allowed, they eliminated slavery, but former slaves were treated as indentured servants. Um, so there were still slaves in Pennsylvania uh, until the 1850s. So it didn't just happen in the North like instantaneously and everybody kind of, you know, it didn't just immediately disappear. But what was different in the North, and that's true even in the 18th century is that slavery was not as ingrained in the economy the way it was in the plantation south. Um, a lot of slaves were actually used as servants and located in more urban areas. Um, and there were slaves who worked in factories in, places, in states like New Jersey. Um, but yeah, but I think it's important to realize that slavery, why it was so ingrained, um, why we need to sort of understand that, that it, you know, this idea that Americans always see the good side of life, you know, or we're the land of liberty, which I always think is quite ironic, uh, we really have to be reminded that no, we're not. You know, we're not the greatest nation on the earth. Uh, and we have to kind of face our past problems with all the facts. Uh, and, and, and as you know, we still haven't solved the race problem in this country. <laughs> um, I mean, that's what's kind of strange. You find that people are borrowing arguments that were used in the 19th century. Uh, I mean, you all know that Texas wanted to secede. <laughs> so, in a sense, I, I think this is, this is the, the value of history. Is to not imagine just because it seems like we addressed this problem in the past that it's been solved. Problems can reemerge. People can reinvent problems. Um, and that's really you know, part of our country's struggle over this issue. Stand to the old country wagon. Days of the movement led by Dr. Martin Luther King as we honor him through this program today. It is often said we've come a long way. That is one measurement. <clears throat> There's another measure. Are we where we need to be? And how often do you hear that question? You often get the celebration of we've come so far. And I'm so glad we celebrate that. But we can't stop there. We have to ask. Are we where we need to be? So where do we need to be? Didn't think there was an answer to that, but there is. Where we need to be is where all Americans have full rights and privileges of being an American, and there is no barrier to color, and there is no reserved section in America for white people, ever. Whether there's a sign posted or not, whether it's subtle, hidden, in the shadows, there should be no Reserve section for whites. And what I like is I know many whites who agree with that. So I'm not saying something that's against anything American. They would be shouting, Freeze, Michael. I hear them steal. 